the argument the Ninevites believe the word, their hearts retie in Medo the Lord, in him they put their only trust, they neorn in sackcloth and in dust section 9 so said, the Ninevites belay of the word, believed Jonas, and belay of the Lord they made no pause, nor jested at the nos, nor slighted it because it was a Jew's denouncement, no, nor did their gazing eyes as taken captive with such novelties admire the stranger's garb, so quaint to theirs, no idle chat passes their itching ears the whilst he spake, nor were their tongues on fear to rail upon, or interrupt the crier, nor did they question whether true the message, or false the prophet were that brought th embassage. But they gave faith to what he said, relented, and, changing their miswandered ways, repented, before the searching air could cool his word their hearts returned and belay of the Lord, and they, whose dainty lips were cloyed while air with cates and viands and with wanton chair do now enjoin their palates not to taste the awful bread, for they proclaimed a fast, and they leos looser bodies once did lie wrapped up in robes and silks of princely dye, lo, now instead of robes in rags they mourn and all their silks do into sackcloth turn they read themselves sad lectures on the ground, learning to want as well as to abound. The prince was not exempted, nor the pere, nor yet the richest, nor the poorest there, the old man was not freed, whose hoary age had even almost outrun his pilgrimage, nor yet the young, whose glass, but new begun by course of nature had an age to run for when that fatal word came to the king, convey with speed, upon the nimble wing of flitting fame, he straight dismounts his throne, forsakes his chair of state he sate upon, disrobed his body, and his head discrowned, in dust and ashes groveling on the ground, and when he reared his trembling core again, his hair all filthy with the dust he lay in he, clad in pensive sackcloth, did depose himself from state imperial, and chose to live a vassal, or a baser thing, than to usurp the scepter of a king, respectless of his pomp, he quite forgave he was a monarch, mindless of his state, he neither sought to rule or be obeyed, nor with the sword nor with the scepter swayed Meditanine. Is fasting then the thing that God requires can fasting expiate or slake those fires that sin hath blown to such a mighty flame? Can sackcloth clothe a fault, or hide a shame can ashes cleanse thy blot, or purge thy offence? Or do thy hands make heaven a recompense, by strowing dust upon thy briny face are these the tricks to purchase heavenly grace no? Though thou pine thyself with willing want, or face loketh thin, or carcass ne'er so gaunt, although thou worser weeds than sackcloth wear, or naked go, or sleep in shirts of hair, or though thou choose an ash tub for thy bed, or make a daily dunghill on thy head, thy labour is not poised with equal gains, for thou hast naught but labour for thy pains such holy madness a god rejects, and loathes that sinks no deeper than the skin or closed is not thine eyes which, taught to weep by art look red with tares, not guilty of thy heart, tis not the holding of thy hands so high, nor yet the pure squinting of thine eye, tis not your mimic mouths, your antic faces, your scripture phrases or affected graces, nor prodigal upbanding of thine eyes whose gash football sto seem to pelt the skies, tis not the strict reforming of your hair so close that all the neighbor's skull is bare. Tis not the drooping of thy head so low nor yet the lowering of thy sullen brown or wolvish howling that disturbs the air, nor repetitions, or your tedious prayer, no, no, tis none of this that God regards, such sort of fools their own applause rewards, such puppet plays to heaven are strange and quaint. Their service is unsweet and foully taint their words fall fruitless from their idle brain but true repentance runs in other strain where sad contrition harbors, there the heart is truly acquainted with the secret smart of past offenses, hates the bosoms in the most which most the soul took pleasure in, no crime unsifted, no sin unpresented can lurk unseen, and seen, none unlamented. The trouble so lays amazed whitly dire aspects of lesser sin is committed, and attacks the wounded conscience, it cries amain for mercy, mercy, cries, and cries again, it sadly grieves and soberly laments, it yearns for grace, reforms, returns, repents I, this is incense, whose accepted favor mounts up the heavenly throne and findeth favor I, this is it whose valor never fails with God it stoutly wrestles and prevails, I, 
This is it that pierces heaven above never returning home, like Noah's dove but brings an olive leaf, or some ink rays, that works salvation and eat all peace. Life